Half-Life Alex nails so much of what makes the series great, and VR elevates its best qualities. Even veterans such as myself wish I knew a few of these things before playing. So, here's what you need to know before starting Half-Life Alex. It was on your face and it, oh, it was disgusting. Yeah, it was. Upgrade the pistol, SMG, and shotgun for laser sights ASAP. Throughout Half-Life Alex, you'll collect resin, which serves as a currency for upgrading your slim arsenal. However, you need to be smart about how you spend resin since upgrades are costly. We'd recommend saving your resin to outfit your guns with laser sights ASAP, and avoiding the reflex sight since it's not as helpful. Aiming in VR can be difficult, but the laser sight shows exactly where your shots will land for the pistol and SMG. As for the shotgun, the laser sight is also very helpful because it paints a circle of how your shot will spread. And since shotgun shells are quite rare, you'll want to make sure that each shot hits. Three shots left. Most other upgrades will come down to preference, but the shotgun's grenade launcher and the SMG's multi-clip upgrade are easy to recommend. Each weapon has its best use case. You may have a limited loadout, but it's just enough to get by in Half-Life Alex's combat scenarios. And we have some recommendations for what to use for specific encounters. A few examples, the shotgun is great against combine, especially heavies. The pistol is great for slow-moving zombies and clipping weak points off antlions. And the SMG is best suited for other combine soldiers, drones, and larger crowds of weaker enemies. Use objects in the environment against barnacles. Early in the game, ammo will be hard to come by, and you'll encounter the ceiling dwelling barnacles. Your instinct might be to shoot and get them out of the way. They take three to four pistol shots to kill, but you can save that ammo by tossing any old object into its tongue to keep it occupied for a few seconds, giving you a window of opportunity to get by. Some instances have red barrels or gas canisters in the environment, and if you get a barnacle to eat one, it'll explode. It's pretty satisfying to see them blow to pieces, but take a step back first so you don't get hurt. And don't forget to check the aftermath for any ammo that they might have dropped. Shoot headcrab zombies in the head crab. Half-Life veterans may know this all too well, but if you're not aware, there's a proper way to kill a zombie. Aim for the head crab attached to it, and you'll kill the zombie and head crab simultaneously. If you shoot the zombie in the body, the head crab will survive and come at you. This will take up more of your ammo and make your life that much harder. So aim for the head crab. Store grenades and syringes in your wrists. You may forget from time to time that Alex can store health syringes and grenades in her wrist pockets. Simply hold the object near your wrist to put it away, and you can grab it at any time. Remember this will come in clutch for heated encounters, especially when the game ramps up the challenge in the later half. Pull grenades using the gravity gloves. Combine soldiers will sometimes throw grenades at you, but what if you just threw them right back at them? You can do that with the gravity gloves. Just pull the grenade in as you would any other object and toss it. You'll save yourself from getting hurt and you'll inflict damage on enemies. And if you're clever enough, you can pluck the grenade off an unsuspecting or dead soldier's belt. Use a combo of walking and teleporting for movement and other mobility options. Half-Life Alex incorporates multiple movement styles and you should go with whatever's most comfortable for you. We found that the most effective method, gameplay-wise, was to use a combination of continuous analog locomotion alongside teleportation. Teleportation can get you out of a bind fast and covers more ground. However, analog movement can be more precise when trying to get in specific positions, especially in combat scenarios or getting close to objects if you're not using a room scale setup. Test if any of this makes you motion sick and tweak your options accordingly. Look for doors with handles, and especially red handles. I know this sounds like a no-brainer, but the way Half-Life Alex leads you from section to section is in its visual cues. Don't bother with doors that don't have handles, they won't open, and there's nothing that lies beyond them. Now you'll want to be on the lookout for more than just any old door handle. If something you can grip has red paint on it, it's important. This is particularly relevant to garage doors that require you to get down to open, and some cabinets that contain critical items. In later sections of the game, it's very important to keep this in mind. Follow the circuits and cables. Most of Half-Life Alex's puzzles revolve around the multi-tool. Critical path puzzles usually consist of rewiring circuitry to power certain objects. As the game goes on, these become more complex, and you'll have to be more mindful of where these circuits lead. You can trace them or check where they are inside the walls by simply holding your multi-tool against the wall. Tracking the current flow is also important as these puzzles begin to span larger spaces. Similarly, you'll want to keep an eye out for where cables lead and come from within the environment. A few puzzles may have you scratching your head, but if you keep an eye on clues like cables and wiring, these will eventually guide you to the locations of critical points and what you need to interact with. Hey Russ, you wanna swap in here? Yeah, no, I would probably die instantly. 
Quick tip for spatial puzzles. There's one set of multi-tool puzzles that require you to move one node to another. It starts with a few red nodes that cause you to fail the puzzle, but ramps up in difficulty. Red nodes start to move and leave dangerous trails, but you can take your time. As long as your multi-tool is disengaged, you won't fail the puzzle even as red nodes hover over. So those are some basic tips we have to get you on the right path before jumping into Half-Life Alex. For more on the game, be sure to check out our full review here on GameSpot.